Welcome, Ross. We greatly appreciate your leadership. Um, as always, we begin all things at Setsi by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands that we're on. We also acknowledge our ancestors. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. And we acknowledge all of the elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So please tell me about the, remar the remarkable work um, of the Black Business Professional Association. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be here and being part of that, um, this conversation. Um, the BBPA, what can we say? The BBPA is a 41-year-old organization, mm -hmm. serving uh, Black-serving organization, but perhaps the, the longest Black-serving organization when it comes to uh, Black businesses and professional, uh, where, uh, Black businesses and professional. Um, we we run 20 programs at the BBPA um, all around all around serving black business and professionals. Uh, some of them our scholarship program that um, last year we gave 150 scholarships to black students who probably would not be able to continue university had it not been for the funding. And we're so pleased and so grateful for um, the sponsors who, set, so who stepped up to do that. Um, as you know, um, the BBPA uh, produces the Harry Jerome Awards, which really um, celebrates Black excellence across Canada. And uh, we're always pleased to, 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 to do that because I think it's important for us as a community to have that, that, um, that, that visibility. Um, and that celebration, um, you know, uh, one of our other programs, and I, I can go on about all 20, but I'll just talk about one more, which is really dear um, to me, is our BAIDS program, which is our, um, uh, a program that uh, provides supports and resources to, to Black businesses. You know, when we, when we look at the challenges that Black businesses have, um, we, we always say access to capital, okay? Right access to networks, but an important one is access to the training and the resources and the support services to be able to drive their businesses forward and um, base six to, to, to provide those resources and those support systems that allow businesses to kind of accelerate and grow. Right, absolutely. So can you articulate the BBPA's mission and vision for me? Yes, so we, we, we exist to create, um, to create equity and advocate for black businesses across Canada. Our goal, our goal um, is um, over the next four years is to impact 10,000 businesses across Canada. Incredible. So how all, important, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was saying all black owned businesses. Yes, absolutely. How important is entrepreneurial uh, development uh, for, for the Canadian black ecosystem? Oh. Tremendously important. I mean, if you use me as an example, um, me, like most Black businesses, opted out of corporate Canada because of anti-Black systemic racism. And we see that happening even more often now. Um, over the last few years, we had a number of people um, being hired into jobs um, because of the George Floyd uh, murder and, and, and corporate Canada's awareness um, of, of wanting a more diverse en environment. But guess what has happened? We move forward to 2023 and a lot of people are being laid off. Oh. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a great opportunity. Um, uh, we see more and more black businesses, black, black people, okay, black professionals saying, my only, only way to build generational wealth mm -hmm. is by doing my own thing. Um, I, re I remember looking at a study that said um, um, just under 5% of all entrepreneurs across Canada are Black entrepreneurs, and we're going to see that number rise over the next five years. Um, so it's important that we, we continue to, to support and ensure that, um, that our Black-owned black businesses are sustained. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'd love to hear about your entrepreneurial roots. What, uh, what, what forced you to, to be an entrepreneur? What inspired you to be an entrepreneur? You know, um, I'm from the beautiful island, originally from the beautiful island of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up on the island. 
my father was a serial entrepreneur. Um, you, you, he thought of it and he did it. He always showed up and he was always ready to, to make, take a risk. Um, he owned um, insurance companies, one of the first um, um, locally owned insurance companies, um, hotels. Uh, so I come from a I come from a family of entrepreneurs. I mean, I remember my my grandmother, my mother's side, was one of the first woman entrepreneurs that I knew, and she ran a little rum shop we call it in a village. And every Sunday when when I visited her, I could see her you know, selling, selling her, her, her goods, selling her stuff and beating up guys who hadn't paid and that sort of thing. So entrepreneurship was a, was a big part of, um, of, of, of life for me. I started my first business in high school in St. Lucia. And mm -hmm. um, my dad was a huge collector of um, movies, VHS movies. So yeah. at one point he had 3,000 of them. So I would actually borrow, borrow those movies <laughs> <laughs> and re-rent them at school to friends and that became a big business for me um, wow yeah, blockbuster so, yeah I was, I was the original St. Lucian blockbuster <laughs> so that's where that's where I, I really started at university I had a my first official company called Crown Computer Sales where we okay. I saw an opportunity that um, existed to sell computers to new uh, people coming to university um, in the first year. And um, that was my first real business where I actually paid taxes and I actually had a registered business and did all the books for the business. So I've been in, a, I've been in entrepreneurship uh, since I was a child. Absolutely. So what inspires you most about your current work as a business leader and entrepreneur in Canada? You know, um, the business, my, my current business all, um, is a, around talent. So we've got a few different um, uh, businesses that are focused around talent. And um, for me, um, the, our goal is to help people get into jobs mm -hmm. and help companies grow through. Right. So, um, you know, when you, when you look at um, even a newcomer to Canada, like I was 20 odd years ago, uh, mm -hmm. coming into the country and getting that first job. And then being able to buy a house, being able to go on a vacation, a dream vacation, um, or even be able to start their own business after a few years working in 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 um, in Canada. That that's the, the kind of thing that really, really uh, is important to me and to the work that we do as an organization. Yeah, absolutely. So what challenges and barriers do you face uh, in your work and how do you and your team, uh, how are you working to overcome them? You know, um, the industry that we're in is actually a very, very um, challenging one. I always say to people in our, in our space, we're, we're the only sales cycle where both your product, which is your candidate, and your okay. client can say no. Your product has a voice. So that in itself is a challenge, right? You, that is that is a challenge. But um, one of the things that you know in in our industry is um, good talent is always hard to find. It doesn't matter where it doesn't matter where the people are getting laid off every day. Um, right. Good talent are hard to, is is hard to find, and our challenge as an organization is always keeping abreast with what where talent is. Mm -hmm. and ensuring that we're putting the best talent in front of our customers. Right, fantastic. So um, what is your, your ultimate goal as a president of BBPA and what does success look like for you and your colleagues? That's such a great question mm -hmm. and, and one I can probably talk about for hours. Um, earlier I mentioned about our 10,000 businesses being served. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, um, in Ontario, Ontario has the largest Black population and by right. virtue of that, the largest number of entrepreneurs. And, you know, my, my goal as, um, as chair of the board for the BBPA is to ensure that the BBPA has a strong footing in every province around Canada, where we're supporting businesses in every province, that we're partnering with different organizations in every province so that we can we can um, serve more businesses. Um, the tagline is uh, no business is left behind. No black owned business will be left behind um, with the BBPA. 
Right. So how do you feel about the future of Black entrepreneurship in Canada? It, like, is it improving since that cash injection or like, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? So, so let me let me first say that the, 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 the whole um, injection of cash is great. It's not enough, mm-hmm. but it's a start. So if we think back to six years ago when I started my business, mm-hmm. I didn't have the supports that we have now. Right. Right. So I think the important thing for us as, 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 as a community is to come continue to take advantage of the resources that are available. But mm-hmm. as organizations like the BBPA, we will continue to advocate for more for our Black businesses. But we are resilient people. Yeah. So with or without the support systems, I can see the Black community, uh, business community growing, and we will continue to persevere to build generational wealth through our communities. Absolutely. So do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action? Yes. So um, I, will, I, I, will, I, I would love to send a message out to, to our Black businesses. You know, um, we right now are going through a recession, uh, um, especially in North America. And, you know, it could be very daunting because the entrepreneurial journey is a lonely one. Mm -hmm. I would encourage us to um, show up, always continue to show up, uh, stay focused and understand that it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a war and not a battle. And there are very many stages through that journey that you will have to fight through. So continue to take it one day at a time. I believe, again, we are resilient people and we are able to go. If we went through slavery, we can we can go through anything. Absolutely. Thank you for that. We so appreciate your time and your remarkable leadership, Ross. Uh, And we'll close the same way we began this interview by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands that we're on and uh, acknowledging our ancestors. So we acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. And we acknowledge all of the elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ross. Thank you. Thank you.